Hi everyone, welcome to the video. In this video, I'm going to explain what semen retention is, the practice of semen retention for men, what are its benefits, why do some men do it, and how does it fit into modern society, ancient societies, the future, where we're headed, you know, all of that. So semen retention, as the name suggests, is the practice of men abstaining from ejaculation. So retaining their seed within. And with that practice, guys can still engage in sexuality, you know, so guys can still have sex, they can still masturbate, whatever, but they just don't release their seed. The reasons for this, in essence, are that semen or a man's sexual fluid is associated with energy and a lot of subjective qualities like confidence, enthusiasm, charisma, even things like a feeling of synchronicity, like life is flowing. And it sounds crazy, but this is what a lot of guys almost universally report when they put this into practice that when guys retain their seed, when they refrain from ejaculation, especially excessive ejaculation, there's a feeling of confidence. You feel like the vicissitudes of life can't shake you anymore, that you're more grounded, you know. And I suppose groundedness is a quality of masculinity, of the masculine principle, of yang, that, that yang principle, it's groundedness. But it's kind of like when a man retains a seed, all of the qualities of the masculine are accentuated and exacerbated. So you feel more grounded, you feel more solid in who you are. In conjunction with that, you feel more accepting of who you are. If others, you know, critique you or look down on you in some way, it doesn't affect you as much, not nearly as much, or if at all. It's like that analogy from Christianity, from the Bible, of filling your cup. What, and it's a very apt analogy, really, because you know, we're talking about a fluid here. Like, when you retain your seed as a man, it's like you're filling an internal cup within. And that cup is like the seat of your power, your abundance, your confidence as a man. And it's like from that cup, all subjective abundance in your life flows, you know. So I suppose it's, 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 it's on a very deep level. Like the, I think one of the main issues is that in modern society, we, I suppose, through our education, through the media, through just the beliefs of others around us reinforcing those beliefs, we've come to see... Um, I suppose fundamentally we've come to see things in a very materialist light, you know, that uh, everything is just matter and there's no, there's no energy, there's no substance to things, you know, there's no, there's no consciousness, you know, there's no, in a, in a metaphysical sense, you know, like we, 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 we might believe in consciousness in modern society, but it's in terms of like, you know, the wiring of the brain is just a function of the brain you know it's just signals and chemicals and all of that stuff it's a very materialist reductionist view but what's missing i believe at least in modern society is a kind of a more esoteric and more metaphysical and more spiritual view on things which is what many or most ancient societies would have gave homage to, would have honoured, would have upheld in their beliefs was this idea that, you know, what you see with your five senses isn't all that, that exists, you know, there's a world, there's other worlds behind, beneath, beyond the physical that engage with and are intimately connected with the physical. You could even say in one sense or from one perspective that the physical springs forth from these unseen, invisible, you could almost say eternal worlds. 
So Eckhart Tolle, he's a famous spiritual author and influencer. He talks about the unmanifest and the manifest. So the, the manifest springs forth from the unmanifest. So it's like, it can be hard to conceive because you know we're so used to just perceiving with our five senses, you know, what we see, what we smell, what we hear, what we taste, what we touch. But it can be helpful to consider this idea, first of all, consider it as an idea that there's a hidden world behind and beyond and beneath what we see and everything else that is primary to this world and it gives rise to it. It can be helpful to consider it as an idea first and eventually you can start to feel it more and more. It's a very subtle thing but you can kind of feel that presence, you know, and I guess that's the basis of all spirituality and all religious practice in essence is connecting with that hidden unseen world and that hidden unseen world is intimately connected with what is called God by some or the creator or if you're more of the kind of humanistic spiritual perspective then you could call it like source or the universe but really there's actually no division, you know, the only division is true language and perhaps through the failings of the ambassadors of religion when some of them became corrupted and they engaged in uh, negative ways and it kind of warped our perspective of what they were espousing even though what they what the religions were espousing was very pure in the beginning and it was essentially the same message as what we see in humanistic spirituality so that's another point for another video maybe is that there's kind of this false unnecessary division and there's kind of this contempt for religion whereas there's a lot of goodness there that can be gotten out of it if you just know where to look and if you can disregard the behaviors of some of the clergy of the churches and all that kind of thing but like i said that's a topic for another video so where i'm getting with all of this is that in terms of semen retention is that in modern society we came to view a man's ejaculate as just fluid you know it, it is pretty spectacular that it can impregnate a woman and create new life and all that but we really just saw it as you know reduced to sperm and their capabilities there was no kind of energy to it as, as we saw it but a lot of the ancient societies they viewed um, semen or a man's ejaculate as a very sacred substance on, in more ways than one so you know, the Taoists, for example, of ancient China, they refer to this idea of Jin, you know, so there's, there's three main forms of energy, Qi, Jing, and Shen. So Qi is like what you work with, with practices like Qi Gong. So, you know, when you're moving the body, it's kind of the energy that just flows through the whole body. And it has many correlates, you know, like blood flow, um, like chemical reactions in the body, you know, heat, uh, the breath, all of these things, they all kind of tie together to correlate with what's referred to as chi. But chi is kind of beyond all those things as well. It's, it's kind of like I was saying earlier, you know, it's the exact same example actually of, you know, how um, you have all these physical functions, but behind that there's something more primordial. And chi is a great example of that in relation to those correlates I mentioned. So that's one, and then Jing is the it's kind of the sexual energy. So it's associated with the kidneys, and um, cultivating the health of the kidneys through right diet and through herbal medicine and all this kind of stuff. And some fasting is said to greatly increase and and preserve your Jing, because Jing is said to be a finite resource, which is really interesting because. Um, it, that correlates with some of the teachings actually in the semen retention in OFAP communities and all of that that essentially you know every time a man ejaculates something a little a little something is taken from him and it cannot be fully recovered you know so that's why it's important to preserve your seed that's kind of the one of the foundations for this movement this practice that men are coming back to is we're learning that Tying in with the whole esoteric side of things, the yin and the yang, the yang principle is the masculine, the yin, the yin is the feminine. So the yang principle, and this is tying in with Taoism again, the yang principle is um, 
from what I gather at least, from what I've seen, is that the Yang principle is said to be more prone to depletion in some respects, uh, sexually especially, than the female, or the feminine principle, I, I mean to say. So we can see that with the, the way of sexuality that we've been trained to, that when a man ejaculates, you know, he feels very depleted and he has to kind of recover. And women don't so much have that. Um, you know, they're, they're more prone to... I know a lot of women struggle with orgasm, so that can be an issue, but on the other side, a lot of, issue, a lot of women also can have multiple orgasms, so you can see kind of there's more of an abundance there when it comes to sexuality for women. So what, it, what it's about for men is about preservation, it's about cultivating our energy. And tying back in with where I was earlier, sorry I'm going in, in so many different directions here, that's kind of just how my brain works. But So to finish off the last point, the other energy was Shen, so Qi, Jing and Shen. And Shen is the Shen is a more spiritual energy. It's the, the the most refined and highest of those three energies. And the idea is that Qi feeds into Jing, and Jing feeds into Shen. So Shen is like refined Jing in in one way. Um, so that's why it's really interesting just how everything connects, though, because. It's reported by many, many guys when they retain their seed, when they practice semen retention, that apart from all the other more rudimentary benefits like confidence, focus, energy, all of this, some guys report that they, they feel more spiritually connected, they feel a greater connection with the universe, with God, with whatever you want to call it. Um, they get more kind of insight, more spiritual insight, more discernment, they're able to uh, tell truth from falsehood more easily, more readily. You know, so that's that's said to be connected with the third eye, third eye chakra, pineal gland, pituitary gland, all that. So it's interesting how that connects. You know, that the ancients that they actually had a pretty accurate map of reality in many respects. You know, and the uh, the pattern in modern society is that we disregard all of that. You know, that we think we're so advanced and so enlightened. And I talk about all these points, by the way, in a document that I created recently. It's a free document. It'll be linked in the description of this video and in the pinned comments below. It's a free sexual energy mastery guide. So in essence, how to um, overcome addiction to pornography, how to cultivate your sexual energy, how to practice semen retention, and how to channel that into more creative, more fulfilling areas of your life so that you can be, you know, just happier, more fulfilled, more free. So I created that. You can get it, as I said, below, and it's free. And I talk in that document, in, in one part of it, about the contrast between ancient and modern societies and their view on semen retention and just male sexuality in general. So... Yeah, ancient societies, they treated male sexuality with more reverence, you know, and the, the, the seed, essentially. Um, so like I was saying, the Chinese, they viewed it as Jing. So they, what they saw was that semen, it wasn't just this physical substance. Yes, you've got that level of it, but what they saw and what they taught was that it also has like an energetic level to it and even higher levels like the seed of man, a man's ejaculate, his semen, it contains a lot of energy and a lot of life force and vitality. And on a very rudimentary level, this makes a lot of sense when you think about it because it is a miraculous fluid. Like this is the fluid that in partnership with the female's egg, it literally creates a new human being. You know, it calls a new soul into existence, into this developing fetus, this developing human body. And it's the it's like a seed, you know, germinating to form a plant. It's like the human equivalent of that, that you know, the sperm and the egg, like together they can literally just be the be the start of, of a human developing just 
innately true genius, true just the creativity of the universe, of God. So there's so much happening there that we probably don't even realize, you know, so many levels to this. It's certainly not just genetics and, um, you know, very materialist views on things like, you know, just genes being read and coded and replicating cells and all of this stuff. Like all of that is being driven by something, you know, it's not just happening with its own accord. There's so many levels to reality, like energetics and spiritual aspects to things. So all of that is tied in with the semen as well, you know, which is the starting point for all of this. And so imagine if that fluid can create such a miracle that, you know, retaining that and cultivating that within your body versus squandering it you know as many guys do like ejaculating like multiple times per day and um, treating it like it's water or it's just some universal fluid when it's a very precious substance and another side of this is um i was reading once about the i think the vedic culture in india like that's another that would have been another powerhouse for wisdom in this area back in ancient times, you know, the Vedic culture of India, um, where they spoke of, you know, Brahmacharya, which is the practice of, I suppose it's somewhat related with celibacy, um, but it's just about kind of purity of mind and cultivating your energies for higher purposes, higher pursuits in life and for the service of others, you know. But um, they also spoke about how there's different levels of refinement in the body. And I, I don't have this exact now because it's been a while since I read this, but it's something like, you know, your when you consume food, your food gets converted to child, I think it's called, which is like basically just the, the broken down food within your body. That gets converted to something else now, maybe blood, and then the blood gets converted to I'm getting this wrong now, but blood to fat or something, then fat to uh, bone, then bone to bone marrow. And the bone marrow then is said to be quite crucial in the production of semen. And it's from the bone marrow the Indians in intuited that semen is created. And semen is like the refinement of all of those processes. So semen is like kind of the final step in a very long process of energy conversion and refinement. So it's like a very sacred condensed fluid, you know. And if you think about it, because of that concentration, if you're expelling that seed, you're expelling the equivalent of so much energy further up the chain, you know, like so much blood, so much food, all of that energy is condensed and you're just releasing it out, you know. And guys do this repeatedly, excessively. So imagine the, with that train of thought, imagine the, the impact that has on guys' energy and their confidence and everything else and you can see that um, I know this area isn't like very scientifically researched yet and a lot of the most interesting areas aren't but you can see it in the anecdotal evidence of like literally hundreds of thousands of guys that they all experience practically the same you know so is that placebo or is this something fundamental that's happening here that it's kind of outlined in what I was saying you know so yeah, when guys release that, they experience you know, lower confidence, lower energy, um, just feeling kind of like hazy, like brain fog, all this stuff, like not as fluid in social situations, people aren't as drawn to you. And this is, you know, the energetic side of it again, because when you cultivate your seed as a man, you're storing up that energy. And like I was saying, imagine what that's doing to you. and Again, the other thing to realize here is like, there's so many levels to reality, we, we can hardly imagine what's actually happening. And you know, science is a really great tool. I, I, I studied science myself originally, so I, I'm well versed in like literature and like studies and stuff like that, and I have great respect for it, you know? But I think the other side of science is that it doesn't have all the answers. And unfortunately, science has in some ways become kind of arrogant and it's there's kind of an atmosphere in science now that you know it has all the answers and the truth is you know the more you know the more you realize you don't know and the more you know 
yeah, just that, you know, the more you know, the more you realise you don't know. And I think science does have this kind of hubris that, you know, all areas like this are pseudoscience, you know. Um, science has become closed off to many areas, whereas if science opened up, there would be a renaissance of knowledge, you know. It's like that quote by Nikola Tesla. I think the... The, the moment science begins to study non-physical phenomena, it will make more progress in a decade than it has in all of its history. And you know, that's tying in beautifully with what I discussed at the beginning of the video, you know, how we're so focused on the physical in modern society. We see everything through a physical lens, you know, materialist lens. It's just the sum of its parts. It's just, you know, atoms and molecules interacting, coalescing. And, you know, the universe is just a big machine or something like that. That's basically the view of materialism. So, yeah, when science can study the non-physical phenomena, it will make more progress than ever before. So, what is the non-physical? It's that world I was referring to, you know, behind this physical world, from which this physical world springs. And that world is primary, it's kind of realer than real, in a sense. And possibly that's the world that people get connected with, actually, when using, when working with plant medicines, you know, because on psychedelic trips, I've experienced this myself, that there's a quality to it, it's actually been given a name, it's called the noetic quality, so N-O-E-T-I-C, quality, the, the noetic quality, and what that is, is during a, an entheogenic experience, entheogenic means um, realizing the, the divinity within, during those experiences, there's a feeling that what you're experiencing is realer than your everyday waking reality. It's like you're coming home to a, to like a deeper, more profound truth and reality, like reality with a capital R, truth with a capital T. Um, and so that's what we're referring to here, and we get glimpses of that work in plant medicines. Um, And that's kind of the world that we're bereft from, you know, in this society. I guess we're going very deep here, but like, you know, I suppose you could say from one perspective, the ailments of society, you know, like why the world is the way it is in some respects is that we've gotten disconnected from something very fundamental, which is our connection to this world that we came from, this world that's primary to this one. And it's kind of something that exists everywhere and in everything. And when we lose our connection, our felt connection to that, that world, and that, that, that essence or that source, that's when, you know, the ego becomes really strong and that's when we feel disconnected, we feel separate from everything. And um, then we're, as a result of that, we're, we're more prone to destructive habits, you know, everything ties together. So when we're disconnected, we're more prone to like pornography, you know, we don't have a full cup within ourselves, you know, so we seek externally to fill that void and all of that, you know, so I guess you could say that in a really funny way, like semen retention, it's kind of like a Trojan horse, like, because guys do it and they think it's about, oh, you know, like attracting women or, you know, getting confidence or getting focused or crushing it, you know, that kind of thing. But it's like a Trojan horse for like spirituality and um, connection and greater fulfillment and yeah, just feeling whole in yourself on so many different levels because like I was saying, you know, there's just kind of an unseen energy to the seed of man, like semen, it's not just a physical substance. When you store that up in your body, that energy is growing within you, you know, it's cultivating within you, that jing, and that jing is being uh, refined to shen and this is especially helped through sexual transmutation practices so in essence that's um you know exercising uh, eating clean foods you know eating lots of fruits and vegetables especially um getting out into nature getting sunlight you know grounding you know walking barefoot in nature creative works you know writing singing dancing music art uh, photography, videography, graphic design, whatever it is that you do, it could be anything whatsoever. Once you're kind of creating, once you're working with reality to produce things, that's 
literally transmuting energy from you into the world to create. And that's why it said that we are made in the image and likeness of God, you know, that God, or you could say God, source, the universe, whatever you want to call it, because I know God as a word is triggering for some people and I can understand why, because I felt the same way when I saw the, the misgivings of the church, when I saw the misgivings of religion and certain members who represented those messages, I turned away for a while as well. But now I'm just seeing that God is just another word, another pointer to truth, you know, and the truth is the same truth that source points to or the universe, whatever you want to call it. It's all just language, you know. Don't get too caught up in the words, just look at what it's pointing to. So, um, fuck, I lost my train of thought there now. Um, yeah, so I think semen retention, like I was saying, it's just a Trojan horse, you know, like we're getting more connected through this practice spiritually. And that's uh, what I found as well. It's just been a very empowering practice, you know. And I'm not saying I'm perfect with it. Like sometimes I have the occasional like release or I, I have the occasional like ejaculation or whatever. Um, it's very, very rarely if ever that I even like look at an image online or something. Um, I don't watch pornography at all really anymore. So I think it's been it's probably been like six or eight months since I properly like looked at pornography so and in terms of my practice like I'm pretty much retaining continuously um what I what I've started doing recently is I started like doing kind of more of a cycling approach where I have like a release maybe like once a month because what I found just on my journey was if I retain for a very long time sometimes it would feel like I would I was suppressing my sexual energy in a way you know so I found that the occasional release was helpful for me um, but I'm practicing retention other than that you know um, and yeah like I've been on this journey for a couple of years and I I think you know my longest bouts were kind of like six months like 150 60 days there thereabouts and it's been one of the best practices I've ever implemented you know just in terms of breaking free of an addiction you know feeling more free more empowered more fulfilled having more energy at my disposal and getting more spiritually connected too as a result I don't know if there's anything else I want to cover. Um, yeah, I suppose a bit more on modern society as well. Like I think we we were trained in modern society to have a very irreverent. Um, what will be the word um, we did we weren't trained to honour our seed you know, we weren't trained to or educated to on the importance and the, the preciousness that will be the word the preciousness of our seed you know through the prevalence of smut in the media you know like pornography nudity um, all of that through yeah, even television, movies, and just through the collective as well of society and how others kind of, we were all kind of led to act in this way collectively and there was a reinforcing aspect to it as well. That a lot of guys, you know, they just started using pornography from a very early age and many became addicted to it and became addicted to depleting themselves in essence, you know. And we were trained to only be comfortable with a very low level of sexual energy within ourselves you know and if our sexual energy ever built up we would have this urge to just immediately release it rather than becoming comfortable with it and learning to circulate it through the body and channel it into creative pursuits so where i think we're going in terms of like sexual energy and humanity's future 
I think humanity is going to be just waking up more and more to the detriments of pornography. I think science is eventually going to catch up and start doing more scientific studies, you know, on the impacts of pornography on the human brain, on relationships, on how men view and engage with women, uh, pornography's impacts on women, um, and just relationships between men and women. Uh, just impacts on human psychology, sexuality, preference, all of that. Uh, physiological effects like erectile dysfunction. I think we're just going to get a lot of science starting to catch up, you know. I think the principle is that in a lot of areas of life, what you get is there's an enthusiastic segment of the population that are kind of like citizen scientists in a way that they try things out through their own experience and report on it anecdotally and gather evidence there and in many cases that evidence is kind of ridiculed by the scientific body because there's kind of this thing it's like that quote by Gandhi you know first they what is it first they ridicule you then they violently oppose you um, and then you win or something like that so we see that playing out here that like the scientific establishment initially they're they're kind of passing this off as like just ridiculous you know like the idea of semen retention and porn being harmful or detrimental but now what we're seeing actually is that it's moving even to phase two of that where there's some you could say violent opposition that there are like scientists who are in cahoots with the pornography industry who are being funded by the porn industry to churn out studies that make pornography out to be very beneficial that scaremonger people you know about prostate cancer and all of this rubbish and those same scientists who are on the, the payroll of the porn industry they're attacking good people out there who are making an effort to bring word of this to the public you know on the detriments they're they're attacking them they're trying to um de-platform them they're trying to sully their names sully their work you know all of this and it's just very very negative you know it's very i suppose on one perspective if you want to go deep with it you can look at it through the lens of spiritual warfare you know that there is good and evil in this world there is positive side there is a negative side and the negative side basically is all about falsehood it's all about manipulation it's all about deceit lies treachery and that's the side of things that has kept us all subdued you know and kept us locked into this like negative habit and this is just one area of life you know where we, we've been suppressed and controlled but basically the light is coming to the fore you know truth is coming to the fore truth is rising in this area about the detriments of pornography and also truth about male sexuality and what we're truly capable of and you know truth doesn't rise to the surface without opposition from the negative especially so that's what we're seeing is that we're moving into that opposition phase now but what's going to happen i believe is that a critical mass is going to be reached increasingly and um, more and more guys are going to learn about this it's going to spread already i feel that like you know pornography use is like becoming quite a shameful thing it's being seen as such and being portrayed as such whereas before even when i was a teenager it was just seen as like par for the course as a normal part of growing male sexuality you know and learning and and all about the, all, all about that you know so i think the times are changing people's perspective is changing and i think that will only accelerate as the years and the decades go by um and i think in a highly evolved society that pornography will be looked down upon as like um just ludicrous you know that it's a very shoddy replacement for true human intimacy you know touch hugging affection slow sex kissing just intimacy that's what pornography is a very shoddy replacement for and it's really a symptom of how messed up our society is at present that we have these kind of shoddy replacements to try and um, bandage the wounds or fill the void within you know so everything is connected like it's not like pornography is just a standalone issue it's the healing of those wounds and the re-empowerment of humanity and 
the cultivating of male sexual energy for good that's part of a broader picture and it's part of the broader spiritual awakening spiritual evolution of humanity on the planet so i think very good things are ahead for humanity you know in, in this realm and in all other realms that we are gaining awareness we are gaining insight through the internet and these things are only going to accelerate as time goes on men are going to come more into their power cultivating their sexual energy treating it with higher regard using it for good you know more creativity more fulfillment you know being better men for the women and the children in our lives you know better relationships more harmony more unison between male and female um, a renaissance in many areas of life and you walking this journey if you're doing it is just part of that process you know so give yourself a pat on the back you know for even taking on this challenge and looking to better yourself you know because many people still aren't there yet so yeah i think i'll leave it there for this video kind of an old broad overview of like semen retention why it's important you know ancient societies modern society uh, the metaphysical you know the unmanifest and the manifest Taoism, the Vedic culture of India, ancient society perspectives, how semen is just more than a fluid, it's got energy there, there's spiritual levels to reality, you know, and how it's such a miraculous substance that when we cultivate that, it only makes sense that it provides so much good for us, and how, how science hasn't really caught up to these understandings yet, but I believe that it will. So, yeah, fairly dense video, I think there was a lot packed into that, hopefully you got value from that. Um, my first video back on this channel after a bit of a hiatus you know kind of a one month hiatus so that hiatus was very good you know it was very insightful for me as to where i want to go with the channel gave me some respite so i'm coming back refreshed and yeah i'm going to be regular with the content again so that's it thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video